what a wonderful crowd. The family gathering. It's been a few years now. Now, we are going to be diving deep into what it means to age and not age, and how we can, you know, reverse aging. And ex not just lifespan, not just years in your life. I think many of you don't really want to just have a few more years while you are basically, you know, crippled in terms of your body and mind. But you want to have healthy years in your life and die boots on, like many of the speakers in this conference are definitely going to attest to. Now, if you think about what is the big problem today in our society, it is chronic, de chronic degenerative diseases. So basically diseases that break your body down slowly. Things like diabetes, things like Alzheimer's disease, and uh, heart disease, of course. Now, if you are more than 65 years old, 64% will have two or more of these type of chronic illnesses. And right now in the world, 27% of world population has at least one chronic disease. So this is the epidemic that we have to deal with. And the problem with dealing with something like this is that in most cases, we are not treating things because people are not technically sick, you know? They might be sick for 20 years, and uh, that's the challenge, is that things like diabetes kind of cramps up slowly, and once you have real symptoms, it might be already too late. And for this reason, you know, we have to start looking at not just, you know, medical treatments that have been able to help us to double human lifespan, but also life like food choices that we have, exercise, supplements, all of that, and social network. But I believe with biohacking technology, we're able to push that envelope, maybe to 120, maybe 150, 180, who knows? We will see how this will evolve. Now, in this conference, we always invite artists to make art, uh, to push the boundaries of what it means to be human and how we see health and well-being. And uh, that's why we bring people who have vision uh, and are able to transmit that and transcend what our experience is of ordinary reality of being human beings, connected to everything else. And that's why we created an amazing visionary gallery, and artists like Vesa Kivin and Alvar Gulish and Sakari Lehto and David Flasberg will be painting in the middle of the uh, venue uh, some of their artworks or performing them. And we have also Pablo Amaringo, so artwork, one of the most famous visionary artists from the Amazon, who is already gone, but his artwork will be in the VIP lounge. It's accessible for VIPs and, and speakers and artists and so on, and organizers. Uh, there's a possibility of upgrading your pass uh, to be able to access VIP lounge, which has some nice experiences as well as some, uh, some art and uh, beverages by requesting from the Biker Center stand. There's a separate fee for that. But basically, if we, think of, uh, if we think of health, when I look at someone who is becoming healthier, I see more structure in their face, I see more structure in their body. I think health is about this kind of structure, this type of balance. And that reflects in things like sacred geometry as well. Many holy places have this type of geometry that is portraying and communicating something divine, something beyond us, something holy that we all connect to. And this basic mathematics is actually in the core of the universe. All known universe is basically reflecting back this very basic mathematics that we see in golden ratios and Fibonacci numbers and so on. And if you think about health, if you look at someone who is sick, like imagine someone who has been, you know, doing drug abuse, you know, crack cocaine or something, their face is almost like melting, right? And once you get healthy, you, there is some kind of like spark, some kind of light that enters. And that's, that's pretty much what I, what I look at. And um, maybe you already enjoy some of this great artwork that we have, you know, designed for all the speakers and throughout the venue. I've been using a software called OmniGeometry to generate these digital mandalas and working together with Vesa Kivinen and Sakari Lehtonen to make these artworks. And uh, while working on these and creating these uh, geometric patterns, I've noticed that um, when I close my eyes, I still see them. And it kind of like somehow influences my thinking 
everything like becomes more harmonized. And ten Buddhists, for example, they meditate on mandalas. And uh, also in India, they use mandalas. You know, all these different mandalas are in a in a way reflection of you. So when you have this beautiful uh, like mandala that has that you are also doing your creating yourself, let's say in sand or in this case with geometry, uh, and there is symmetry, there is harmony. You start to reflect those same numbers and same patterns. And we can see this everywhere. Uh, Johannes Kepler saw that there exists a very common geometry in the universe. From universe to smallest particle of matter, everything is under violent effect of this common geometry. All branches of science follow the rules of common geometry. This natural geometry exists everywhere where there is matter, there is geometry. And we can see this everywhere in a single cell that divides and builds up into a more complex organism, we can see it in the macrocosm, we can see it in the microcosm, we can see it everywhere. The proportion of your leg, to the proportion of your hand, to the proportion of your finger, to the proportion of one, jo one joint in your finger is the same as a tree, bran a tree trunk, to the branch, to the smaller branches, to the leaves. And if, imagine seeing something like lung tissue. You're looking at lung tissue. It's a beautiful tree, it's a beautiful fractal. And what happens when you get disease like cancer? There is a break of pattern. There is some kind of like malformation of structure. And I believe this is like what health really comes back to, is this homeostasis, this regulation, self-regulating aspect of biological processes that reflect back this fractal nature of the whole known universe reflects back the whole fractal nature of all evolution, starting from, you know, the single bacteria cell organisms up to, you know, today uh, of, of us on the top of the food chain. But we are still concentrating all of that, you know, um, biological um, diversity. We are like, uh, Paul Stamet says, we are 60% mushrooms, you know. Um, uh, the eukaryotes, for example, they live in your gut. Uh, the mitochondria in, in a single cell is an ancient bacteria that migrated in the center of the cell. We are basically a holobiont, a combination of this evolutionary process, kind of a super organism sitting top of an organisms. And in the end, like when we talk about ecosystems, we think about you know, balance, we think about equilibrium. Well, all different forces are kind of having compensatory mechanisms to maintain this structure, to maintain this homeostasis. And I think that is a reflection of what good health is all about. And it's all about understanding that we are not separate from nature. We are part of nature. We are a reflection of the nature. We are not, you know, we don't evolve in isolation. When you think about something like biohacking, you know, you optimize yourself. My question to you is, for what reason? For what reason are you optimizing yourself? What are you trying to become? Are you trying to contribute to the world? Are you trying to maintain things better than you found them? So I think one of the principles that we have to adopt is that we leave things better than we found them. Our bodies, our environments, our friends, families, community, anything. As, as man-made as we come into it, we have to maintain, and with responsibility, this balance. You are a system of systems. You are part of systems um, on multiple different levels. You are a cybernetic organism. We are not that far from something like AI, in a sense, the way how we learn from the environment, we evolve through feedback loops, how we learn from our experiences. If you look at even human brain patterns, this is an article released in Nature magazine. The human brain networks function in these harmonic patterns and waves. And you can probably already see, like, there, these aspects. It's a freaking multi-dimensional uh, computer, in a sense. But don't get me mistaken, in a sense, or, or don't misunderstand me. We are not computers, but we create technology, and the technology is a reflection of us. It's kind of, in a, in a way, it's the next evolutionary step. We create our tools, and then our tools create us. And many, you know, tools that we use today, anything from pen and paper and mathematics, and science is an extension of us, language even, that reflects back, you know, the evolutionary process of who we are. 
And from our book, The Biker's Handbook, you can see this kind of spiral dynamics of evolving and becoming a whole human. From going from territorialism and just like childish competitiveness and egocentric ways of being to understanding that we are all one, we are all from the same source, we are all connected, and we are all just experiencing the same thing from different uh, points of view of the universe, but we are part of the universe, we are all connected. This is very important, and we can see that across you know, multiple different layers of existence, and it's all going back and reflecting in terms of chemistry, in terms of physics, in terms of biology, the beautiful natural patterns of the known world. Now, this stage is a Fibonacci spiral. So you can actually see it like it's, it goes like a spiral up here. And during the breaks, you can come on stage and there is a sensor and you can experience these artworks moving and reacting to your presence. Because you are one, you are kind of, you are becoming the mandalas in a sense. You are holobiont, you're a fractal representation of self-similar evolution. You're a product of emergent intelligence, the ultimate prototype of orchestrated specialization. This came to me uh, in a meditation one day, and I thought I would love to share this idea with you. Because that is, in the end, going back to the golden ratio of health, what it means to be healthy, what it means to you know, bring back the balance, bring back the golden ratio, and everything that you do you know, in harmony with you, your environment, and the wider whole. This is what we are here for, in a sense. Like, um, Steve Jobs said, we are here to make a dent in the universe, in a sense. Now, that might be all about, you know, optimizing health span through different means. Uh, you optimize the environment around you, to optimize the environment inside of you. But the question always is not only about how, which is, you know, the diets and the tools and the technologies, but the question is why. Why do you do this? Why do you want to become optimal? or anything, really. And there are so many philosophers who have been thinking and reflecting what it means to be human. Like, for example, here, um, from uh, Fabre d'Olivet, um, over a hundred years ago, the constitution of man. And you can already see, like, the way how he started mapping this out, he, he had to, like, look at what it means to be human as kind of almost like a holographic, multidimensional complex. Um, and, and he divided that the spirit, soul and body. We, you know, in Blacker's handbook, we divide that to the body and the mind. Um, but in, the, in a sense, you believe in spirit or not, you know, uh, or you believe in soul or not, you know, it's all about how you show up and what you do and, and what kind of meaning that deeply really has. And we are not just human beings, you know. We are human becomings. We evolve through interaction with our environment, with our friends, with our ecologies and biology. And, uh, you know, thinking about immortality, thinking about living long, anti-aging, all of that, we're all going to die. You know, we're all on the freaking same boat. Some people are trying to escape the fear of death, by being focused on biohacking, by being focused on health optimization and, and trying to, you know, um, run away. You know, look at Silicon Valley entrepreneurs. They try to run away from their absolute, ultimate demise. We're all going to die. The question is how? And every single day, you have the opportunity in every single moment to decide how you're going to show up in every second, in every minute, in every moment of the now. Um, we are working on a new book called The Resilient Being, How to Master Biology, Resilience, Immunity and Longevity, from the level of a single cell up to the whole organism. You can scan the QR code or go to resilient-being.com and uh, pre-order the book. If you like what we do, please do. Now, remember, you should become a member. We are in a community that is all about becoming unity. And connection is connection in action. Love is to evolve. Thank you very much.